Corporate finance practice problem using Excel. Use annuity calculation to find payment amounts. Get ready, it's time to take your chance with corporate finance. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. If you have access to the Excel worksheet and would like to follow along, note that we are in the practice tab as opposed to the example tab, the example tab in essence being an answer key. Our information is gonna be on the left-hand side. We're gonna put that into the blue area on the right-hand side, doing a few different calculations, one being a mathematical calculation, then a running balance type of calculation, an annuity formula calculation, and then with the use of the tables, ending it off with table time. Going back to the information on the left, we have our annuity type of formula that we will be doing, but we're going to be kind of backing into a component of it once again, this time backing into the payment amount. The scenario we can think about for this type of calculation would typically be something like we're going to invest into an annuity and then we'll give the life expectancy and the percentage if we have the rate then we can back into the payment meaning if i have for example if we have five hundred thousand, and we're saying hey i want to put this into an annuity so that i get a fixed payment from it for the next 25 years assuming then the rate or provided the rate of the 10 percent that's going to be then the question is what will the payments be how much will i get in that situation if i had the five hundred thousand to put into a 25 year annuity rate 10 percent so we could do this a few different ways we could of course do this algebraically down here we'd have to pull out the old uh, annuity formula and instead of solving for the present value of the annuity typically being solving for the fi 500,000 we would say that the 500,000 then equals and be solving for this item p so 500,000 equals p and then we have the one minus one plus r which would be the 10 percent to the negative period which would be 25 divided by r once again which once again would be the 10 percent and then we can solve for p it then being the only unknown so that's the first way you do it if you had a book problem that would probably be the way they might uh, have you do it in that format or we could try to say okay what if i use excel to do this because i might know the annuity function for this i might know the present value annuity function i could say well do i need a whole nother function in order to figure out the payment do i need a like a function that's going to solve for the payment as opposed to the present value of uh, the annuity like what the five hundred thousand? not really you can kind of use the same concept down here you can say well i have a function it's not algebra but i only have one unknown for it is there a way that we can use excel to kind of figure out what that unknown is it would look something like this i'm going to i'm going to go over to the item to the left where we will do this this is going to be equal to the present value present value you could see this calculation we need the rate the number of periods the payment those three things if i only have one unknown will, will result in the present value of the annuity if i know the present value of the annuity but i don't know one of these things such as in this case the payment can i use this same function even though i can't kind of rearrange it algebraically because it's an excel function we can we'll use the goal seek uh, feature to do that so that's what we're going to kind of lead into so we're going to, one, you could do this algebraically. Two, we're going to take this algebra and put it into our standard format up top and then approximate the goal seek function that we will use. And then we'll use that goal seek function in the standard way that you would want to be applicable to other types of functions in this present value function. So let's put this into our table as we've seen in the past. We're going to have P times this whole thing on the outer column. The numerator is going to be in the inner columns. And then, um, and that's how we'll set up basically our, our worksheet for this formula. So I'm going to start off with the payment, which we don't know. So I'm going to assume I'm just going to put in a number here. I would always kind of put in an estimate number on the payment because you want to kind of start with something there in case when you calculate this, it divides by zero or something like that. And it won't work without a payment. So I would typically put something in here. This is what we do not know. I'm going to put the 20,000 in here. I'm going to make it yellow, go into the home tab font group, make it yellow. That's what we're looking for. And then I'm just going to plug in the rest of the numbers and connect them all together with our Excel worksheet. So now we have one. I'm having the numerator. Now we're looking at the one plus R to the N. We're over here. So we're looking one plus R, which is going to be the 25%. Going to percentify that by going to the home tab numbers percentify. Underline it. Go into the home tab font group and underline. We'll then add those up equals the sum of these two items adding them up 
percentify this one, go into the home tab, numbers, percentify that item, taking it to the number of years, the negative number of periods, in this case years, 25. So I'm going to say negative of that 25, that being the number of periods. Let's underline that while we're here. Home tab, font group, underline. Then I'm going to pull that out into the outer column. We've got this whole section now that we have now calculated once we do this, equaling the 110% to the shift 6 caret 25 periods or years. Enter. Adding some decimals here. Home tab, numbers, decimalizing it. And then we're going to underline it, home tab, font, underline, subtracting out to get us the full numerator, which is going to be 1 minus that number we just came to. Now I'm going to decimalize this one, adding decimals, home tab, number, decimalize. And now we have the whole numerator. Let's go ahead and add the denominator now, which is going to be equal to the 10%. So 10%. Let's make that percentified, home tab, numbers, percentify, underline it, home tab, font, underline, bringing this on out to the outside. We now have the numerator and the denominator, so we can do what we need to do. Normally, when we have those in one number, we have this urge to divide them, so the numerator divided by the denominator, boom. We're going to say home tab, number, percentify, that cell. Underline it while we're here, home tab, font group, underline. And now we can do that final function, final process being multiplication. 20,000 times that number we came to. Add a couple decimals, home tab, number, couple decimals. And there we have it. Now that this is all connected together, then we can change basically the unknown because we know this ending result needs to be 500,000. So the question then, would how much payments would we get then? In this situation, well, let's say let's say it took like thirty thousand, and right, and then I could say, wow, I could maybe go up to like forty thousand, and then keep going up on that, or we can ask Excel to do it. We can say this is kind of a tedious process. Excel, could you just change that number to what it needs to be to make that number uh, five hundred thousand? Because that would be nice. That's what we're trying to do, and I don't want to do it manually. And Excel will say, yes, I can do that. Let me show you how. We're going to go up to the go up to my data tab up top and then go up to my forecast section and then go to the what if analysis and I have this thing called goal seek. So we're going to go to goal seek and then you just tell me what goal you're seeking and we provide it as Excel here. So we're going to say the goal is going to be to set this cell to be the value of 500,000 by changing this cell. And so basically Excel is going to say, I can just do that with trial and error and do that. I can seek that goal for you. So we're going to say, all right, find that for us. And there it is, 5584. So I'm going to say, okay, let's add a couple decimals, home tab, numbers, couple decimals. So therefore, if we have the investment of the 500,000, 25 years in an annuity at the 10%, then we're looking 55 8404 possibly on you know the annuity payments that would take place so let's do that now that we have the concept down we probably wouldn't do it with the formula here we'd probably do that with the function so if i know the excel function for the present value of an annuity but i don't know the function to kind of back into the payment amount i could say well can't i use that function in a similar way doing it algebraically figuring out for that one unknown that i don't know even though it's not the end result of the function we can we can do so with the similar process using goal seek so what we'll do is I'll, I'll estimate the payment here again let's estimate the payment this time at forty thousand, and i want to estimate the payment in some other cell so that when i use the goal seek i can tell excel to change that particular cell in order to put the number that needs to be there to make the function work so or do what we want it to do so we're going to say this is going to be equal to the present value, annuity function, shift 9. The rate's going to be the 10% over here, picking up the 10%, comma. That's not a comma. And then the number of periods is going to be, the number of periods is 25, comma. And then we've got the payment, which is unknown. That's what we don't know. And we just kind of put in something here. I wouldn't put zero in there. I would put something and we'd want to put it into some other cell so that we can then uh, change that cell, cell for the goal seek process. So I'm going to say, okay, there we have it. I'm going to make this a negative number, double clicking, I mean a positive number, 
by double clicking on it putting a negative sign before the p which then makes it a positive number so we know that this result then needs to be 500,000 we want to get there by changing this number which we can then do manually like this 45,000 and so on and so forth until we get to that number we can then allow excel to do that so we'll ask excel could you do that for me excel how do we how could you help us do that and excel once again will tell us to go to the data tab go to my data tab up top and then you're going to go into the forecast uh, section the what if analysis is the tool that i recommend for this process so then we want to set this cell that's going to be our goal we want to set it to be this 500,000 that needs to be 500 that's a six 500,000 like that and we want to do that by changing then this cell the 40,000 change that 40,000 to make that cell what we need it to be 500,000 that's our goal we're going to say okay and excel says there it is and it does it for us so there we have it so that's probably the most likely way that we can do that and if that you would do that in excel and just note that you can do that with many different many different types of functions uh so it's, keep that in mind if you have some unknown you're like i know that fits into this function but uh it's it's an unknown there's one unknown it's not the end result of the function is there some way i can use the algebra kind of thought process to get that to work let's do it again this is a less common way that you would do this particular problem but once again it kind of shows the goal seek and how it can be useful in a, in a long kind of process or a long spreadsheet when everything's connected together so we'll break down this annuity into the present value of ones rather than 25 period annuity we'll bring it break it down to 25 present value of one calculations by saying one and two I'm going to select those two and then auto fill them on down auto filling them on down and then the payment uh, that is going to be the thing that we don't know we don't know the payment so what i'm going to do is just make up a payment here so i'm going to say let's say the payment is going to be we'll say this time thirty thousand. i'm going to say equals that payment and i'm going to drag that all the way down so that's going to be the thirty thousand on the payment and there we have that i'm going to highlight the first one because that's the one i'm going to i'm going to change i'm going to go to the home tab and make that yellow so that's the one we'll kind of focus in on the goal seek and notice if i change that one because all the rest of them are connected to that one then all the rest should change as well so then i'm going to do our present value calculation this is a present value of one calculation for one period out for the first payment this is going to be then equal to the present value shift nine rate ten percent and then comma and then the number of periods this is one because it's just one period out comma comma because this is not an annuity but we're doing a present value of one calculation breaking the 25 period annuity down into 25 present value of one calculations and enter let's make that a positive number double clicking on it putting our cursor before the p and putting a negative there to flip the sign that's going to be our current starting point let's do that present value one more time this time instead of hitting int equals we'll hit negative present value shift nine rate ten percent comma number of periods now two comma comma because it's not an annuity but present value of one and then that thirty thousand and enter let's go ahead and then say this is the prior value plus the current present value and enter we're going to auto fill that down before we do though we got to tell it not to move this percent down that percent if it moves it down it'll mess it up so i don't want it to move it when i copy the formula down don't move that percent that percent happens to be in cell e6 so we're going to go over here to e6 and make it absolute reference we're going to make it an absolute reference absolutizing it by putting f4 on the keyboard that'll put a dollar sign before the e dollar sign before the six remember you only need a mixed reference but absolute reference is easier typically so i'm going to then select these two items Put our cursor on the good old fill handle and auto fill all the way down for 25 items so if we did this correctly then this ending number we want to be the 500,000. we want it to be 500,000, and we're going to see if we can get there by changing then the payment amount so we have a pretty complex type of um, situation or formula here or spreadsheet that's connected together if i change this one component 
then I should be able to use goal seek to figure out this last component here. Let's see if we can do that with the good old goal seek. Uh, we could also, of course, do this manually. I could say, what if I choose like 40,000, then I get closer uh, and so on. I need this to be 500,000. So let's go ahead and do the goal seek again. So we're going to go to the data. We're going to go to the forecast. What if goal seek? And then we're going to say, what if we want to set this cell down here? We want that to be 500,000 by changing this cell up top that's our goal that's our objective can you do that excel and excel's like yeah we're gonna okay there it is okay so once again we're at the 550084 ending result the 500,000 so goal seek can can work in a pretty long kind of spreadsheet as well if it's all connected together let's do it one more time with the tables once again something that would probably not be the the primary way that you would do a calculation like this but it's useful to understand the tables and a book problem may still ask you to use the tables for something like this it's also a good idea just to understand the table so the amount that we have that's going to be the unknown we don't we don't know what the amount is we know what the end result is down here that's going to be the 500,000 and then the amount on the table we actually know we actually can find the amount on the table and then back into uh, the payment amount because we do know that the periods are 25 and the rate is 10 that's what we need to know to get the table. So I'm going to go down and we're going to say 10% and then 25 is down here. That's the 9.077, 9.077, 9.077, 9.077, 9.077. Adding some decimals, home tab, numbers, four decimals. So that means that we can kind of back into this number because this times that should equal that. So then if I say this is going to be 500 divided by that, then we get we get back to that number again. If I if I go up top home tab numbers, add a couple decimals, it's a slightly different because of rounding on the table, that rounding being four digits out. So you could be asked to use a table on that for a for a book type of problem. That that could be something that they ask you. Uh, you know, it's a it's an easier question than I thought really to use the tables for. So it's good to know the tables on that one as well.